Hey, this is Rick at Art Collection. Thanks so much for watching today. It's a beautiful spring morning. The first one really where I could sit outside and have some coffee with biscuits still in my teeth. <laughs> I'm gonna be working on some spring projects today that are inspired by nature. I'm out of coffee. Let's do it. I'm thinking I might just start a whole new series of crafting <laughs> the pajama series. <laughs> Do you like crafting in your pajamas? Okay, so this is a little spring refresh using some of this greenery that I bought at different places. And uh, what I've done is I've placed them on a little piece of styrofoam. You can get this stuff anywhere. And I have a lot of it in boxes that I've used and reused until it falls apart. So I'm just going to place that over to one side and kind of arrange the branches just a little bit till it looks like I want it to look. There's my cat Stormy in the background if you can see her. She always helps. So these are some hydrangeas that I actually cut from the yard from last year and um, they're completely dried out. I've saved them. I love using these little things. There are always color variations. This one's a little more golden, while the others are a little bit more neutral, kind of tan color. So I like mixing those in. It adds a lot of texture, which I think is great, and little variations in color. And these hydrangeas, even though they're dried up, are pretty hardy, so they're hard to mess up. Now, these rabbits I've also had for a really long time, maybe 10 years. They still have the price tag on them. Also because it can be such a pain to take the price tags off and they make a mess. So sometimes it's just easier to leave them. And 10 years later, they're still on the bottom of the decoration. I love rabbits, have you noticed? I use them a lot. I use them in artwork. I use them in figurines. I make rabbits. I love rabbits and so does Stormy. Okay, one last piece of a little bit of a hydrangea and right in between the bunnies, that kind of makes it cohesive from one end to the other. And then the last thing is this printed artwork. This is an 11 by 17 piece, which you can actually have printed up very inexpensively. There's a program that I love to use called Canva, and you just build it yourself and layer it and make it whatever size and whatever color tones you want. I like the neutral colors, of course, and because this whole terrarium is clear glass, this adds a really cool background to it so that you can see everything on the inside without being too prominent or obtrusive. So, there it is. Let's take a look at it and see how it looks inside. Doing a spring refresh like this hardly takes any time at all. You can see I did it all in a few minutes just by gathering things, some things that I've had, and just move them around. So for the next project, I'm gonna go ahead and put on some real clothes. Okay, so I've seen this idea online done several different ways, but I am not good with a knife in the kitchen, so this is just asking for disaster. So I thought, well, what if I try and do it with faux materials and make it something that I can use again and again and again using a real vase for flowers? So first, I found this cabbage at Hobby Lobby. They have them all year long. Then I found this light globe at Home Depot or one of the hardware stores, and also this cat bowl from the Dollar Tree. That's going to be the base of the bowl. So I'll be using Gorilla Glue and hot glue to sort of put this all together. First thing I'm gonna do is take apart my cabbage and set all of these big leaves aside in order of their size. That'll keep it organized for me. It looks good enough to eat, doesn't it? <laughs> At least someone thinks it's good enough to eat. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is start gluing these on around the outside edge. And I'll start with the smallest ones around the top edge. I'm running a couple of beads of Gorilla Glue on each side of the leaf, and then a bead of hot glue in the middle. The hot glue will help stick it to the glass instantly, which will hold it in place while the Gorilla Glue dries overnight. And I'm just gonna repeat the process all the way around the top of my globe. Ok, 
okay, the first layer is done. So now I just repeat all the way around with the next size. Now to keep things stable, I'm gonna go ahead and glue it onto the globe now. And as you can see, there's a label on the inside that I didn't even bother to take off. As I said, this is a bad habit of mine. Make sure that it's straight up and down and level or you'll regret it forever. So now I'm just gonna glue the remaining leaves around the bottom. It adds a little bit of color. They extend around that bottom bowl to cover it up. So that's why I needed to glue it on at this point. Here it is. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Now, with the smallest leaves, which I really couldn't use on the big globe, I'm just gonna repeat the same thing on a little glass boat that I ordered on Amazon. I like doing these for tea lights, for table arrangements. These are so fun and easy to make, really inexpensive, and they make good gifts too. All this cabbage is sort of making me crave a salad real bad. <laughs> Although a cabbage salad isn't usually on my list of things I want to eat. Coleslaw, eh, I'm not such a big fan of. But you know what? Using cabbage leaves for tacos is great. No carbs and with enough seasoning on the meat, they're delicious. There it is, the cute little set. The mama and the little baby. Now here it is in a table setting, and I've used it several different times in several different ways. And nothing right now is actually fresh flowers. So the tulips are also silk flowers. The vegetables are real, and uh, they look just like the vegetables on my little Fitz and Floyd pig. Here's another one that I made out of a different kind of cabbage that I got at Michael's. So here's a really quick craft that I was inspired to do by going to the tile store. So with the tile that I've found, all I'm going to do is take some sticky back felt and put it on the back of the tile. So I started by peeling off the backing and I did the backing on the whole piece of felt, which was a huge mistake because then it started sticking to my hand, as you can see. But I finally figured out, just turn the felt over onto the tile and now that my big head is out of the way, all I'm doing is pressing it in place and then I'm going to cut off the excess. Now, again, if I was doing this with an X-Acto knife on a mat, it would actually be better than sticking to the scissors every time. So I did a couple to start with and I really like this tile with the gray it goes with the rest of the decor in the house and I can use it as a trivet on the table or on the counter. I can also use it as a coaster just to keep the wooden table from getting a ring of water on it. And it's great also if you want to put a candle on it because I always get nervous about putting a real burning candle on a wooden table or an end table or even the kitchen counter, honestly. These things are really pretty, and there are literally thousands of options at the tile store for you to choose from. Fun, fast, and fresh. Now, speaking of fresh, here's another project that's not really difficult, but I think gives you a lot of bang for the buck. I found this wooden plaque at Walmart. Not too expensive, it already has kind of a farmhouse look, but I love the design of it. It's not just a square piece of wood, which is so common. Again, price tag on the back. This is the point where I should take it off, but clearly I'm not going to. All right, so these are regular bulldog clips. I think I found these at Hobby Lobby. So I got this burlap at Walmart because I like the width. Maybe you have some old potato sacks laying around that you could use. Remember that episode of the Brady Bunch where they're doing the potato sack brace? That's one of my faves. So I'm just gonna lay out more or less how much I need. And I'm gonna trim off the finished edges because I wanna fray the edge by pulling out some of the threads. Super easy and it gives it a little bit more of a rustic look. You can pull out as many as you want and make it whatever size you want. All right, that's how it's going to look. So the next thing is to stick it onto my platter. I'm gonna use my trusty spray adhesive, really easy. Okay, just putting it in place. 
make sure you press it down really well so that it's nicely adhered. Now here's one of those bulldog clips that I spray painted white. So I'm gonna use my little awl and make a pilot hole. And I'm using a thumbtack that I also spray painted white to match. Press that in good. This is right for about a five by seven inch picture, but you want the clip to be high enough that the picture is more or less centered on your board and on your piece of fabric. So I found this little wooden tabletop easel for only $5 at Five Below, and it already has a whitewash on it, so that makes it easy. It'll just sit right on top of that easel on the countertop. I could also mount it on the wall, but I've decided I wanna use it on a tabletop. So what I'm doing here is taking a little block of scrap wood and I've made a pilot hole for a screw. And now I'm just gonna measure out exactly the line that this block of wood needs to sit on. I wanna make sure that that's straight so that the picture sits straight. Take a little screw, put that in, and it's ready. That holds it in place on the easel and I'm ready for my picture. So here's an example of some artwork that I created online. I love the way this looks on the plaque, and I actually think a set of these, maybe two or three, would be great with different images. So I created some free downloads for you of some botanicals and also some rabbits, some things that will go really well with the farmhouse fresh look. But for this project, I decided I'm going to use my parents' 61st anniversary picture. Look how cute they are, 61 years. Can you believe it? They don't look a day over 20. So I'm going to mount this on another piece of cardstock that has a little bit of a rustic look to it. So I'm creating a little frame for it. And it also makes the picture a little more rigid so it won't curl back up. So I've used my spray adhesive to glue it on and now I'm just trimming the edges so I have my nice little border. And there it is. Don't they look cute? When my parents come to stay, they have a cute picture of themselves to look at. And here it is in the guest room. I think it fits really nicely in the decor. Okay, hope you enjoyed this spring refresh. If you like this video, watch the next one. You'll love it too. All right, I think it's time to go make those cabbage leaf tacos now. Thanks for watching. Bye.